There's a whole new world in addition to Bitcoin. I'm here with Vitalik from Ethereum and I'm Roman Dile. Can you tell us a bit more about the origin story behind Ethereum? Sure. So I was working in the Bitcoin and blockchain space for about two years before that. So I originally came in through Bitcoin. I first discovered Bitcoin in 2011. Then over time, I uh, started kind of getting more and more into Bitcoin. I uh, co-founded Bitcoin Magazine. And yeah. after two years, I started getting interested in this concept of blockchain 2.0, this idea of blockchains beyond just currency. And there were people at the time that were starting to realize that you could use blockchains for very many different kinds of applications. And people were starting to create protocols, so like next generation blockchains around that. But the problem that I saw with all of them is that they were all still designed around one particular use case. So for example, someone figures out, you know, you can use Bitcoin to do DNS, and be, someone creates, or, or you can use blockchains to do DNS, and someone creates a blockchain specifically for DNS. You know, people, someone figures out you can do you a blockchain for a financial contracts, people make a blockchain for financial contracts, and so forth. So the idea with Ethereum is that instead of taking that kind of narrow approach, you have a blockchain that has a built-in programming language, and that lets people create any kind of application that they want on top of it. So you can think of it as being kind of like the difference between a Swiss Army knife and a smartphone that has apps on it. And then there's a currency aspect uh, as yes. well with this blockchain. Yes. So inside of Ethereum, there is a, a, crypt a cryptographic token called Ether. And the purpose of Ether is basically in order to pay transaction fees inside of the Ethereum network. So the way that that works inside of Ethereum is that in something like Bitcoin, you'd have just a transaction fee and that gets charged kind of for every kilobyte that the transaction takes up. But in Ethereum, it's a transaction fee per computational step. So you kind of pay for you know, as much of sort of the Ethereum virtual machine as you use. All right, that, that's a lot of complicated words you just cool. said, but <laughs> okay. I mean, it's, it's, it's a complicated thing. So what's the most inter interesting use cases that you've seen? Uh, um, there's a few. So there's people that are you know, using it for things like financial contracts, digital assets, all of the sort of standard stuff. There's people combining Internet of Things and blockchain in interesting ways. So for example, there's one project called Salog, which is doing this idea called smart property, where basically you use the blockchain to keep track of who owns some particular physical object. And this could be something like you know, your, a door, a house, a bicycle and you have this sort of smart lock that listens to the blockchain, figures out who owns it at some particular time, and only opens uh, the lock if it sees a message from the person that owns it at some particular time. So this lets you make something like, just as a very simple example, a bike renting system that's completely automated and runs sort of entirely on the blockchain. So why do you think we need automated, uh, decentralized um, systems for all these kind of stuff? More, e more efficient, cut out the middleman, um, reduce barriers to entry, make it much easier for people to create these kinds of systems uh, extremely quickly. Cool, 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 cool. So what's the future? I th it's a very long future. I think the concept It's a of, whole new world out there? Yeah, I mean, the concept of blockchain technology is really just starting. It's kind <laughs> of, you know, if you look at the computing revolution, you know, we had very slow computers, and we had like five or 10 applications. The computers became faster, and, and then other applications became possible, and they became even faster, and so forth. So I think as the underlying blockchain technology continues developing and as people start coming up with different use cases and also sort of integrating them into existing systems, I think we're going to see more and more things pop up. Cool, so the community aspect, of course, is very important, as you know. It is. I think you, you've extremely. done a, a conference recently. Yes. How was it? Yeah, we had a conference last month in London. It was uh, quite interesting. There were about, know, over 300 people showed up. Uh, all of the major groups that were developing applications on Ethereum. We had some large companies like Microsoft and Deloitte show up. Um, it was a particularly nice event because it kind of showed, you know, basically this is what the Ethereum community and this is so up to right now. Have you seen good old uh, brick and mortar banks uh, using uh, these kind of new blockchain technologies? Yeah, actually. There's even a few banks, like yeah. there's UBS that has a, a, a pilot project that's used, built on top of Ethereum right now. So. It's cool, happening. cool, cool. So do you think uh, there are going to be companies um, built on top of your blockchain in the future? Quite possibly. I mean, some, That's of, what the you hope, I guess. some of the companies that are building things on Ethereum are building themselves on top of Ethereum already. Cool, cool. So at some point you expect to be smaller than the bigger Ethereum companies or? Maybe. Okay. What do you think about the Bitcoin foundation model versus yours, which is private company? 
So Ethereum Foundation is also a non-profit. Okay. So it's, uh, the one difference that we do have from Bitcoin is probably that we did this crowd sale where we sold the first 60 yeah. million units yeah, of that's, Ether. That's so, what it was. I mean, I do think it's, a, it's definitely a much more efficient model because if we didn't have the crowd sale, then instead of us earning the 30,000 Bitcoin, people would have just spent it on more mining and we would have probably had just a lot more miners than we needed. Cool, so, so maybe uh, a couple of uh, last questions. Yeah. What do you think about Bitcoin right now? Where, where is it going? Bitcoin, it's... Uh, Definitely a lot of d different directions that it can take. You know, it, on some level, it, de it depends, I guess, on you know what people want to use Bitcoin for. Because there's people that want to use it as a store of value. There's people that want to use yeah. it as a means of payment. It has a, it has different challenges in those different areas. So, you know, for example, you know, price volatility. It's probably a huge issue for people that are trying to just use it to buy and sell things. But if you're just using it as an investment, then it might be something that you want. So. You know, it depends. We'll probably Do you think Bitcoin is going to disappear and, and it's um, just going to be I mean, Ethereum? It's, <laughs> it's extremely hard to say, you know, with any technology. It's, uh, you know, it, it has a very large ecosystem and generally things that are very large do manage to kind of maneuver themselves into some kind of role no matter what happens. But, you know, it's still kind of, it's still very early and like almost everyone in the world, you know, yeah. still hasn't even ha had or used a single, a, even a single tiny fraction of a Bitcoin yet. So. All right. Thank you very much, Vitalik. Uh, that was Ethereum. And there you have it. The future is a whole new world. Thank you.